Hello everyone, my name is Holantje and in this video I will give you guys a brief introduction on how to get started on the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Workshop. In these tutorials I aim to teach you everything there is about CSGO weapon finishes, how to create them, how to use the programs around it and all that kind of stuff. What is important for you to know everything will be covered throughout a variety of videos that I will upload in the upcoming few months. The workshop is a place where you can upload custom weapon designs. You can create those in a variety of programs and that brings me to the first thing that you will definitely need to start making weapon skins and that is photo editing software. I personally use Adobe Photoshop since well, I've been using it for a long, long time and I love it. I really, really love it. I love the freedom it gives you and everything about it. The only downside is it is a program which you have to buy. If you, don't, if you are not looking to buy a program, you can always use GIMP. I will link all these websites and download links in the video description below so you can easily find them there. So, after you have downloaded photo editing software such as Photoshop or GIMP, I always like to refer people to the official Valve documentation. Once again, I will link this in the video description. This is the place that Valve created, the website that Valve created for everyone to see so you can, well, pretty much see what every finish does and all that kind of stuff. Sure, it is going to be very simple and very basic, but at least it's something to start. It's something you can fall back on once you forget a little thing. I will cover all these uh, weapon finish styles as well in separate videos, so it's all clear, fine and dandy. I will pretty much explain the old weapon finish guide in my weapon finish tutorials. So. Once you are on this uh, official file documentation, it is very important you download the resource pack for the workbench. Why is this so important? Well, because it contains UV sheets. Those are heaven when creating weapon skins. Those make those UV sheets make sure that you are actually able to kind of read what the UV sheet is that what the texture is telling you. Besides that, there are models which you can import in 3D software so you can see what your model, your final finish actually looks like. And there are TXT examples which will be, which will give you the opportunity to look what Valve has created. So, when you have downloaded that, you will be greeted with a simple, well, list of OBJs, a list of UV sheets and you are able to open that in GIMP or Photoshop and you can see how it looks. So once you have downloaded this uh, simple resource pack, the first thing you will need is you need to be able to get to the, uh, you need to get these folders, the materials folders, the models folders, the script folders and the resource folder. However, when you haven't unpacked a certain file, they are not in the directory yet. So how are we going to do that? As you can see, in the folder you have a lot of VPK files and VPK is kind of like the package files that Valve uses to like pack up their files. So we need to find a way to unpack these files. Uh, Nems Tools has created a simple tool for that which is called GCFscape. I will once again link this in the video description and we will use this to unpack our files. Once you have uh, installed the file you can navigate to your well folder or you can just open up GCFscape here and the way we are going to unpack the files is simple we go to file open and I will do the whole directory you go to your like steam library you go to program files steam steam apps common counter-strike global offensive and CSGO this is the folder we are interested in so once you are in this folder you go to pack01 underscore dear vpk. This vpk file contains all materials, all models, all scripts and all resources. Those are the important folders. Once you double click on that you will see that this is within the pack underscore dear vpk. As I said before we are interested in materials, models, resources and scripts. If you are interested in sound and particles as well you can extract those but it is not necessary for weapon skin creation so 
once you have done that, once you have selected those, you do the right mouse button and you say extract and it is very, 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 very important, I can't stress this enough, that you unpack those in your CSGO folder because then you are able to make changes to it and the game will actually respond to those changes. So once again, you go to Steam Apps, Common, Counter-Strike Global Fences and you click the CSGO folder. Once you have clicked this folder, you press OK and it will start extracting all those files. I won't do it since I've already done it, but once you have done that, it will start unpacking all the files in your CSGO folder. Okay, so once they are extracted from the VPK file, we need to find a way to open our texture files. So, in order to find our textures first, we are in our CSGO folder, we go to Materials, we go to Model Materials, so that will be Materials and then Models. From Models, we go all the way down to Weapons, and we select V models. V models are the viewport models, so the models you have close up to you, which means they have a higher size, a bigger size, so which means they are sharper, they have more TD level, and all that kind of stuff. The W models are in 512 by 512, which means they have less detail and you are not supposed to edit those. So you go to V models, and here you can pretty much select which gun you want to, uh, which gun you want to like start editing. So let's say we want to start editing the M4A1S. So we open the M4A1S rifle underscore M4A1 underscore S, and we see this. We have a weird file extension which we are not used to, which is VTF. VTF stands for Valve Texture File, and once again, Nemstool created a tool for this, which is called VTF Edit. Once again, you are able to download this from the link in the description. These links will most likely not change, but if they do, I will update the links. Make sure you download version 1.3.3 though, because that will make it a whole lot easier so you don't have to change file versions, but enough about that. So, once you're here and you have VTF added, you can just double click on the file, and as you can see, here we have the texture file for the M4A1S. To get a TGA file, which is openable in, in Photoshop, you just go to File, Export, and let's see, let's just unpack it in the same folder. Um, rifle m 4 a one s save. So once you have done that, it is right here. One thing to note though, when using VTF Edit, once you want to open files from here, you don't go to open because oh wait well you actually do vtf file if you want to open a vtf file you use open if you want to use a tga file inside vtf tools you use import but i will cover that later in another video in which i will explain how to get your weapons from tga to vtf and use them inside the workbench which will most likely be the next video so once you have your TGA files, you can go get, go ahead and open it up in Photoshop, and there you have it. This is your um, texture sheet of the M4A1S. It is quite a mess. This is one of the more complicated weapon be weapons because it has such a big geometry with all those little knobs over here, and well, pretty much all those little things. In order to kind of make sense of what everything is as we can see this is the handguard at the front this is the side like the rail with the sign on top of it this is the magazine but as of now it are all uh it's all one thing it looks like it's one thing it looks like it's all connected but it's actually not these things consist of many uv islands in order to see those islands you can go to the folder where you save the uh, resource pack from Valve, you can go to UV Sheets and select the M4A1S. Let me look it up real quick. Here it is, the M4A1S. You can drag that file on top of here, and as you can see, it will create a UV Sheet on top of it. The easiest way is set this to screen, lower the opacity, and now you can at least see that it are separate parts which you can edit. So now you are basically ready to go ahead and paint everything you want on top of this. Uh, oops, my B button isn't working. Now you can pretty much paint everything on top of the weapon and it will be displayed um, properly. 
you can import your OBJ model into Photoshop. I personally do not use it because I don't like the way Photoshop works with that. I use a different program for that, but I will cover, once again, 3D painting. I will cover that in later videos in which I will explain how to use Substance Painter and 3D Code to paint directly on top of your 3D model and have that correspond with the UV texture sheet. Um, Anyways, you can now go ahead and start creating your first weapon finish. And in the next video, I will tell you everything about how to save this weapon as a VTF file and how to load it up in the workbench. And in that video as well, I will explain everything about all the settings in this workbench because the workbench can be quite complicated in terms of pattern offsets and pattern rotations and all that kind of stuff. It's very important that you get the certain settings right because there are a lot of rookie mistakes that I see being made in the workshop and I want to make sure that everyone who has watched this video is aware of these rookie mistakes and will not make them themselves. So without further ado guys, I wish you the best of luck. I will catch you in the next video which will hopefully be uploaded tomorrow i'm not quite sure i will try to make a video about it tomorrow and if not it will be early next week so without further ado guys best of luck see you